Back to one down. All right. So mean, I hear, is an average. Median is a middle number. What if there's an even number of numbers? It's the average of the two middle numbers. So on number one, we have 80, 60, 54, 107, 29, 38, 55, and 94. That's eight numbers. So you take the middle two, 107 and 29, and average them, right? No, you don't. You have to put them in order from least to greatest. So you start with 29, then go 38, then go 54, then go 55, then go 60, and then 80, 94, 107. What are my two middle numbers? 55 and 60. So you add up 55 and 60 divided by 2, and that's your median. So 115 divided by 2 is 57.5. Okay. Now, look at this huge set of numbers. Okay. Um, well, yeah, you, you got to either put them in order or you can use your graphing calculator. Okay. How do you use your graphing calculator, you might ask? Well, this is how. And actually, we're going to skip number two and go to number three. Okay, because basically we're finding median in number three as well. Okay, so I'm going to go to number three. So I'm going to bring up my graphing calculator. Boom, boom. I'm going to make this smaller. Boom, 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 boom. All right. So on your graphing calculator, you go to list. Today we'll be doing working with the list or stat. Okay, so you go stat, edit. And there's a bunch of numbers. If you have a bunch of numbers in there, you go up, clear, down, up, clear, down. And then you type the numbers. And I'm working on problem number three here, so I'm going to go like this. So 33 point, whoop, come on. Rear back. 33.9 is a number. And then 35, and then 34, and then 28.8, and then 36.6, and then 32.8, 32.1. No, 32.8, 32.1. Yeah, I think I did that right. Um, 37.2. 33.1, 28.3, whoops, 34.7, 33, 30.2, come on, Mr. Beerspock, type, 30.2, 38.7, 38.7, 34.7, 33, no, I got it. 32.8, 32 32 32.6, 34.3, 31.3, and 35.5. All right, so I have 19 numbers in that list. Hopefully there's 19. So then you go stat. And then over to calc, and these are one variable statistics. Okay? You click enter, enter, enter. And there they are. Okay. The X with the line over it is the mean. That's the mean. And then these other ones deal with standard deviation, which we'll get to later in class. Okay? The number of terms is 19. Did everybody have 19 terms? right? Hopefully there are 19. And then if you arrow down, you have the minimum, quartile one, the median, quartile three, and the maximum. Okay. So if you're asked for the median, it would be 33.9. We good with that? Okay. The range is the lowest number to the highest number. So you take and take 38.7 minus 28.3, which is 10.4. So the range in salaries is 10.4 or in thousands of dollars, 
$10,400. The interquartile, the interquartile range of salaries is between quartile three and quartile one. What quartile, quartile three is, is three fourths the way up the data if it's sorted in order from least to greatest. Quartile one is one fourth of the way along the data. Just like the median's the middle one, we've got a quarter way and um, three quarters of the way. So if you take 35 minus 32.1, you get 2.9. The inner quartile range is 2.9. Okay? All right. So that is how to do those. So five number summary. This is called a stem and leaf plot. Okay? A stem and leaf plot. There's a whole bunch of numbers there. How many numbers? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight numbers in the top row, plus another five is 13, plus 10 is 23, plus another five is 28, plus two, there's 30 numbers there, okay? What are the numbers? Well, you take the first, I gotta do clear down. All right, you do the first number is your tens place, your second number is your ones place. So the numbers are 22, 23, 24, 26, 27, another 27, 28, 29, then 32, 33, 34, 34, 39, 41, 42, 42, 44, 45, 46, 47, 47, 48, 49, <gasps> on the same. So I'll go up here. Let's go 47, and then I'll put a 47 down here under 49. All right. 48, 49. And then 52, 52, 52, 56, 59, 61, 67. Okay. Those are my 30 numbers. So halfway in between the um, 15th and 16th should be my median. But if I just do second, or not second stat, just stat, calc, one variable statistics, it'll figure it out for me, okay? If I arrow down, my minimum is 22. My first quartile is 29, my median is 42, my third quartile is 49, and my max is 67. Now, we gotta figure out if there's any outliers. What an outlier is, is a number that's way big or way small that is 1.5 times the interquartile range. What's my interquartile range here? Between 49 and 29, it's 20. So you take 20 times 1.5, you get 30. Is there a number that's 30 below the first quartile or 30 above the third quartile? And the answer is no. So there are no outliers. Some sets will have outliers, some sets will not. The rule for outliers, 1.5 times the interquartile range, and then you go from the third quartile up and first quartile down. Okay? All right. So now, five number summary. Okay? So if we would graph these, okay, and your graphing calculator will graph box and whisker plots. Okay? So what we're going to do is second, quit, stat, edit, up, clear, down. All right. So Babe Ruth, one year he hit zero home runs. Um, his first quartile average is 14 home runs. His median number of home runs is 36. His third quartile is 49. And then 65 is his max that he hit in a season. Barry Bonds, his lowest number that he hit was 5, then 25, then 33, then 
47, then 71 when he's popped up on steroids. All right. So then what we're going to do is look at the box and whisker plot. So we're going to go second stat plot. And I'm going to turn on box and whisker plot. So I'm going to go plot one, turn on box and whisker plot. So I'm going to have to arrow to get to it. And I'll turn on the box and whisker without outliers because neither of these have outliers. So I'll hit enter. And that's going to go off the list one. And then for plot two, so then I'll go second stat plot. And then I'll turn on plot two and do the same thing. But then this one will go off of L2 instead of L1. So I'll arrow over. And then I'll go to this one down here. Go down. Come on. And then second. And then L2 is the number two. If you hit second L2, enter, enter. And then if we go zoom and then I let's see if we this works I'm not sure I haven't tested it yet zoom stat zoom nine hey there's my two box and whisker plots okay oh and I got a random graph going in there too nice but there's my box and whisker plots which one matches a b c or d A is the closest match, okay? Because the top one starts at zero and goes to short of there. Barry starts at five and goes to there. Here, Barry started at zero and Babe started at five. And then these two were just plain wrong. So that's what they look like, okay? So it would be answer A. All right. Um, number six. The median number of satellites of moons in this table, find out the number of moons. Now, when there are, eh, you can figure out six by yourself. Just, well, you just put them in, find the median. It's easy, okay? So you can figure out six and seven on yourself, on your own. The ACT one, or AP exam one is a little different. So I will help you with that one. Okay. What is the mean score of this? Okay. So what you do is you take and add all these numbers up. So you add up 75,488 with 52,880 with 54,561. Oops. And then add to that 29,352 and add to that 95,052. So 307,333 is what you get when you add all those up. Now to find the mean score, you have to multiply the numbers over. Okay. So you have to take 75,000 times five plus and so on so five times seventy five thousand four hundred eighty eight plus four times fifty two thousand eight hundred and eighty plus three times fifty four thousand five hundred sixty one plus two times 29,352 plus one times 95,052. Once you get this number, that's the total addition of the scores. You divide that answer by the answer you got previously, the sum of the number of students, and you get the mean score, 2.949. Okay, that's how you find a mean when there's a whole bunch of numbers involved. Okay, standard deviation. All right, 
standard deviation. So, boom. You know what a median is, blah, blah, find the median. Outlier, we talked about that. Mean, computing a mean for a set of data. A weighted mean, we just did that. Standard deviation of numbers um, is the square root of one over the number of numbers from the sum of one, the first number to the last number of the number minus the mean. What standard deviation does is give you the normal curve. Okay. So it groups data within a certain amount. Okay. So in the center part of the graph is one standard deviation away. Okay. Then you have two standard deviations away. Then you have three standard deviations away. So it med standard deviation measures the spread of your data. And it, it gives you a bell curve for your data. So if um, you ask your college professor if it's graded on a curve, some college professors actually use this to grade on a curve. That's not a good thing. Okay. Um, that's not always a good thing to grade on a curve that way. Um, unless, yeah. So they use a normal curve when they're doing like AP exam, calculating statistics for the AP exam or the ACT exam or so on. Because they want a certain section of the population to fit, fit in certain numbers. So they write test questions hard enough so the kids end up in that percentage. Okay. It's kind of different. So here's the rules for standard deviation. 68, 95, 99.7. So 65% of the data should fit in one stand or 68% of the data should fit in one standard deviation away from the mean. 34% above the mean, 34% below the mean. Then if you're two standard deviations away, then that's 95% of the data, okay? And if you're three standard deviations away from the mean, that's 99.7% of the data, okay? So if you look at it graphically, this is one standard deviation away. This is how much of the total data. Two standard deviations, that's almost everything. And three is basically everything, okay? So that's standard deviation. Now, our calculators figure out standard deviation for us. But those of you going to college, um, if you're in a business major, you have to take multiple statistics classes. Um, but a lot of people have to take some sort of a statistics class in college. So you do need to understand some of the basics of statistics. It's not on, I mean, only mean, median, and mode are on ACT tests, okay? They don't get into this other stuff. But standard deviation, you will see in college. So it says, find the standard deviation of this set of data. Well, our calculator finds it for us. So you go stat, edit. We're going to clear out our lists here. So they're ready to go. So if I go 181, 177, all right, 176, 187, 167, 186, and 214. Hey, that's my set of data. So then I go stat, calc, and again, they're one variable statistics. Your standard deviation is that fourth number down, this 13.753, 13.753. Then to find your variance, that's the standard deviation squared. So you take this number whoop calculator this oh it probably won't let me arrow 
that way. So you take the 13, 5, 7, whatever, to 9, and you square it. And I don't think 13, 7, 5, 2, 9. So if we quit 13.7529 squared, boom, is 189.142. One eighty nine point one four two, which I bet a lamp match the answers. No, it didn't. I must have entered in something wrong. One of my numbers wrong. Because that doesn't match at all. So let me go back to my list. Stat. Edit. 181, 177, 176, 187, 167, 186, 214. Uh-oh. Stat, calc, one variable statistics. Oh, looked at the wrong number. The S, the one above that other one, the one above the 13.573 is standard deviation on this. So 14.855. So if you take second quit, 14.855. 5, 5 squared, 220.671. Mm, how many? Three decimal places. The problem is going to be you got to use more. I mean, it worked for this, but I got to use more decimal places to hit the right number here or else it'll count it wrong. So that's how you do standard deviation. Standard deviation, let the calculator do it. And then um, take that number to a whole bunch of decimal places squared, and then you get your variance. Okay? Are we good? Okay. So you'll have plenty of time to work on this now. Let me assign it out.